Welcome to Longmont Voices and Vision, a project of Longmont Public Media. In the midst of the darkest period in our lives, when we're bombarded 24 hours a day with news of the coronavirus and the human and economic carnage it's causing in our society, we're challenged to cope with our fears and anxieties while remaining hopeful about what lies on the other side of this crisis. This project presents an opportunity for Longmont residents to share with others how they're adjusting to new realities of social distancing and the kind of future they hope to experience on the other side of the crisis. I'm Tim Waters, host of these conversations and a Longmont public media volunteer. In this series, I'll be asking Longmont residents, many of them your friends and neighbors, three questions. What are you doing to get through this crisis? Even though we cannot be together right now, how are we staying connected to friends and families? And what's the future you are hoping to see and experience on the other side of this crisis? I hope you'll stay with this series and enjoy listening to your friends and neighbors and learn from them how they're getting through and what they're looking forward to in a new reality on the other side. Emily Waldeck, Hi. thank you for lending your voice and your vision to this Longmont Voices and Vision project. To get started, just tell us a little bit, about, a little bit about who you are. Great, thank you. It's a pleasure to be able to be a part of this. Um, I am a Longmont resident of six years, but a Colorado native for six generations, and um, I'm a mother, which is my full-time pursuit right now, but I also consider myself to be a visionary and social activist and community builder and artist. And um, all of those are uh, getting re-envisioned in new ways in light of the current climate. So, yeah. yeah. So given the current climate, mm -hmm. uh, tell us how are you getting yourself and your family through the situation we find ourselves in now? Sure. Um, I think the thing that's been required most is um, really simplifying and slowing down and letting all of us be um, uh, recalibrated to what these times are. The, the, the energetic climate of this time is unlike anything we've ever, ever experienced. So um, uh, we've really just had to focus on the very basics of tending to life on the home front. And um, I am a mother of a two and a half year old and um, my husband is considered essential workforce. So he's away most of the time. So it's really me one-on-one -on -one with a toddler most of the time. And um, she does not get value out of connecting to loved ones via a screen. So uh, <laughs> that was a huge disappointment to realize the first couple of days because I was uh, imagining um, feeling a lot of uh, sanity and sanctuary coming from connection that way. But that really hasn't proved to be much uh, as much of a resource as I'd hoped it would be. So um, we're getting outside every day, masked now, of course. Um, and I've taken up running again, uh, which is not something I was expecting. And um, really just working on taking care of our bodies as best we can. Um, I'm not super integrated right. into my neighborhood, so um, I, don't, I don't know of elderly people around me that need my support. I don't have family local to this area that I'm connected to, so it's, it's really just our little microcosm of three here um, trying to make the best of the day-to-day and the really stripped down um, experience of our lives together. <laughs> so how are you staying connected to, obviously you've described part of how you're staying connected to your husband and, and daughter right now, but how are you staying connected to friends and family in, the, in this context of physical isolation and social distancing? Yeah, um, there's a bunch of um, pretty consistent FaceTiming with family members who are far away. Um, but prior to this, I was very actively involved in running Family Village, as you know, which is this um, 
child care cooperative that provides community and co-working opportunities for parents and really focuses on parental health as the key to childhood wellness um, and the wellness of our culture as a whole. And um, we've done our best to shift uh, gears to creating virtual village offerings. So having um, time with our child care director for the kids to read books and having the big kids read books to little kids and having adult coffee hours and happy hours and things like that. And um, that has been valuable. Um, but like I said, for the kids, as young as they are, they really rely on snuggles and smell and play in a way that just doesn't come through when people are pixelated. So um, uh, that, that's that been helping me stay connected some to the community that I had already developed here, but um, I'm hungry for, <laughs> I'm hungry for what we had had. Yeah. Um, and to go back to a new version of normal together. Yeah. Well, let's talk about what, what lies on the other side of this. It's, it's, I think, safe to assume that whatever the new normal is, it, it's, there will be differences. Yes. Life won't be quite the same on the other yes. side of this as it was before. Um, life in Longmont after the floods of 2013, life wasn't the same. It was actually, I think, better. So, yeah. you know, maybe, maybe we've moved towards uh, some preferred future. Yeah. What would be your preferred future? What would you like to see on the other side of this and experience on the other side of this? Yeah. I've been thinking long and hard about this question the last few days, and I could rattle off any number of changes I wish to see in policy and things like that. But I think none of those really have much meaning unless we come out of this with a much better story about who we are a much better story of ourselves, a much better understanding of um, a contextualization of these times beyond the narrative of um, history as we've known it, um, an understanding of these times in the context of histories that have been um, deliberately suppressed over time and expanding of our understanding of time and our place in the fabric of life as a whole. Um, my hope is that these stories empower us and help us to really access hope and resiliency and an understanding that what we're seeing right now through this crisis is that we are, we are interconnected. There is no, there's no choosing of that. That is, that is fact. What we're seeing is that the caliber of our connections are um, based on life destructive values. They're based on um, competition and um, and, and assumptions about the nature of reality that are outdated. They're based on scientific understanding that um, has out, outgrown itself, that needs to be revised. It's based on spiritual understanding that is um, needing to evolve. My point is that I think that this, we have an opportunity to see this uh, not as a grave but as the birth canal to something new. And that recognizing our interconnectedness, we can choose stories that bring us back to a place of reverence for life, reverence, reverence for one another and valuing of our vast differences as the source of our greatest gifts. Um, it's my view that we're actually on the precipice of a renaissance unlike anything we've ever seen, that we could come out of this choosing to restructure our economic system in a way that um, that that prioritizes uh, cooperation and creativity and um, symbiosis rather than um, competition. Uh, and not that that doesn't have its place, but it needs to be in the context of working as a whole and finding one's place in that whole and working to create harmony and balance within that whole. Um, and uh, I, I, my, my take on what, how we've gotten to this place is that we, um, that our economic system is based on um, exploitation and slavery and um, the individual at the expense of the whole. And that is, that's a set of, um, that's a worldview that uh, we've agreed to and we've been, we've built all these institutions and way of life around and we've maxed out what that can do for us. We've seen what that can do for us. And all it does is create 
a culture of deprivation and poverty and isolation and disconnectedness. And it's, it's, um, I think that we are on the cusp of, of experiencing ourselves in a whole new way and, and of realizing that what we can create when we come together and when we focus on empowering one another and valuing one another and working together, what we can see resulting from that will blow the lid off what we ever thought was possible before. Um, so for me, on a more tangible level, this comes down to um, making reparations with cultures that were exploited to um, build the economy that we currently have. Um, it looks like making sure that our government is representative of the diversity that we um, actually have in this culture and in, in, this, in the states in particular. Um, it looks like making reparations with, we've, we've simply outsourced slavery. It, we've banned it here, but it exists now. To, it keeps perpetuating the economy that we've had um, further afield. Um, and I, I think that there are, um, I think there are so many solutions and technologies and innovations and ideas that already exist that we haven't put into play because they don't um, have economic value. And I think that it's time to really uh, reassess that because I think that that's just, they don't have economic value to those who want to keep the status quo intact. Um, but that there's enormous prosperity to be found in um, taking industries that need to die, industries that, um, you know, uh, technologies like coal and nuclear power, those are, those are on their way out. And I don't actually believe that's, that wind power and solar power are the solutions for us either. I think that there are technologies we know about that source energy locally using um, gravity and um, energy in a way that we haven't understood. Um, and so I'd really like to uh, come out of this um, with and uh, with policies that um, promote collaboration and cooperation and don't penalize people um, and and put uh, that allow for our consciousness to expand to to open ourselves to um, healing modalities that um, to have our healthcare system be inclusive of everybody and not privatized to have um, to have that include the use of herbs and sound and um, forms of healing that we don't even consider alternative they're still they're still so kind of um, far removed from what has been accepted by the mainstream in terms of being a healing tool um, I could go on and on, but I'm not sure that that would be <laughs> what's useful if, if there's, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm learning how to articulate what it is that I really value, but if there's more that it would help to expand on, I can share that. Otherwise I can wrap it up. Well, I'll keep, uh, keep thinking about the future and what those aspirations are. And thank you so much for your willingness to participate in this project. Take care of yourself and your, Thanks, and your you family. Too. You too. Stay well. So Rick and Cindy Hogue, welcome to Longmont Voices and Visions. Tell us just a little bit about who you are, how long you've been, lived in Longmont, and then I've got a, just three quick questions for you. Okay. Go ahead. Cindy. All right. Um, I'm Cindy Hogue, and I have, I grew up in Longmont since I was five years old. Then I left to teach high school in Denver, Jefferson County for a few years, came back and have lived here since 1977, since we got married. So 43 years. That's correct. Mm -hmm. I moved here shortly before mm -hmm. our marriage uh, to get settled. And mm -hmm. then uh, of course we've lived here as a married couple since June of 77. Well, and, and viewers of, of uh, this series may remember Rick as, as former council member Fogue. So Possibly. That was back in the late 90s. <laughs> Thanks for your service. 
-hmm. I have I have uh, three questions for you. Uh, okay. Obviously, in a in a a period of time that is unprecedented for anybody on the planet, none of us have experienced that. Uh, it just seems like it would be good to learn from one another what you're doing first to get you th yourselves and your family through what we're experiencing right now. Okay. Well, for me, the first thing is as a sole practitioner in the practice of law, I haven't noticed a great deal of change from my individual practice because I only see people one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I have encountered some difficulties with the court uh, doing a lot of probate work the court is actually shut down from the standpoint of uh, probate matters. So that is affecting various estates. But uh, beyond that, it hasn't been a total hardship on me because I bicycle to work and uh, I'm a one man sole practitioner. So, Cindy? And um, what am I doing to get through the crisis? I guess um, trying to stay healthy and positive and I'm now working from, I work a couple days a week at Gold Key Travel, which we've closed our doors, of course, to customers. Now we are trying to do everything we possibly can from home. And um, then maybe we'll go down and, you know, work on our system sometimes at night or weekend to, to do details. But um, other than that, I do a lot of, I'm enjoying walking and biking. We've been gardening. And, um, Lots of yard work, right? You know, right, just, which which is kind of nice. And then um, also some reading. And I've I've decided for me to limit my news watching to one hour a PBS news hour from six to seven each evening, and that that does it for me um, because I found it was it was um, to, it was overload, and I didn't need to hear that over and over again. Yeah. So twenty four seven news cycles. Right. Become right. Burdensome. So, yeah. so in this era uh, of social distancing and, and quarantines, mm -hmm. how are you staying connected to your family and friends? Well, that the um, phone calls, texts, and then of course these Zoom meetings we've been doing with the family. And we have some rather technical uh children so they are tech able savvy. to tech savvy they we <laughs> have tiny beans instagram mm -hmm. uh, or google chat and google a duo. few other things like that, that allow us to continue uh, in contact with the family even though our daughter who lives locally we're not able to uh, see very much uh, at all uh, with their their six-year-old and a four-year-old so so have you, you have your own help desk Yes. yes. Uh, and can others in Longmont access that help desk? Oh, I bet they can. <laughs> <laughs> my, um, my, la my last question is, uh, in, a, in a time when um, it is uh, easy uh, to just focus just on the 24-hour news cycle, uh, it's also fair to assume that life will be different on the other side of this crisis. Mm -hmm. So as we anticipate getting on the other side of it, what are you hoping to see in the future? What's your preferred future? What would you like to see and experience when we come out of this crisis? Do I go first? Uh, the number one thing I would like to see is to assure that uh, Mr. Trump does not continue on as our president based on all that he has said and done and what has transpired, not just in connection with this pandemic, but uh, I think for the good of our country, it will be important for him to be voted out. And that's, I think that's something that will hopefully come out of this, although evidently he has received a boot bump in the ratings as most leaders do in the time of crisis, because people aren't thinking very much about um, what actually is happening. So that's one thing. The second thing that I would hope <clears throat> would come out of this is to address universal health care on a much more meaningful basis. Um, being the only industrialized country in the world that doesn't have a basic form of universal health care, it seems that it might be time. And I think this uh, episode is 
illustrating some shortcomings with our current system. So I'm, those are two hopeful things and that we will have um, a little more compassion, more understanding, tolerance uh, between people in our country and with the foreign countries. So. My, my number one, I'll, I was, I'll, I, we didn't talk about each other's answers. We decided to just do them separate. So um, I put universal health care as my, that I'm hoping also, and that we are more of a United States. I'm feeling, I'm really bothered by this um, states being on their own. And when there's a problem in New York, it's sort of like, I liken it to our local education foundation. And we help every person in our entire district. Whether you go to this school or that school, it doesn't matter. We, we're one district unified. And I look at this United States that we should be rushing to support whomever needs the need at that time. And then I'm sure that when, if we get into that same situation, it would come our way. Um, I also, I've really enjoyed watching families turn more toward home. And I think being even more engaged, I mean, we live in Old Town and it's been so much fun to watch bicycling and walking and um, much more so than normal. And even when I go out to, the, I've never seen the Greenway parking lot full before if you go at certain times of the day. And of course we do the social distancing, but I think that's exciting as we turn toward nature and maybe reevaluate um, what's, what's even more important in life. And sometimes it is so simple, I mean, for me, I just don't think you can be nature and, and I love taking baths. So that's a nice thing. It's pretty easy too. <laughs> um, um, and I just think the community spirit is, is there, you know, we're checking in on people that are alone and I, I feel our community is really good at that. And um, always keeping in mind those that can use uh, hand up and hand to, to help. Um, and really I, I'm ready for this um, less of the us versus them. Um, it just didn't seem to ever be like that before. And, I, and I'm thinking that at this time, together, we are in this together. The world is in this together. And I applaud Bill Gates for um, his donation toward the vaccine. He's been, he, you know, his podcast from five years ago was right. I mean, he predicted this. He would have been, prepared. you know, I think we've had people that, would prepare, you know, it's easy to look back, but I also like to look forward and I think we will be stronger and uh, more cohesive in the future. All right. Rick and Cindy Hogue, thank you for lending your voices and your vision for Longmont. You bet. Well, thank you, thank Tim, you, Tim, for all you do. You appreciate it. It's our pleasure. Okay. Sergio Angelis, thank you for lending your voice and your vision to this project, the Longmont Voices and Vision Project. As you know, uh, we're asking participants to share a little bit about themselves, and then we've got three quick questions. So sure. tell us about you. Yeah, well, first, uh, thank you, Tim, for, for doing this. It's awesome. Um, so I'm Sergio Angelis. I've been in Longmont since 2016. Uh, I grew up in Boulder County in Gun Barrel. I actually moved there when I was five. Um, so I've been around the area um, and pretty well connected to the business community here in Longmont, working with Longmont Public Media and Innovate Longmont, helping startups um, and all kinds of stuff. So that's me. I'm 29 years old. Uh, I like the outdoors. Uh, I like drinking beer, hitting up the breweries, eating good food, you know, with friends, hiking, uh, all the same stuff. <laughs> well, Sergio, tell us how are you getting through this what, this unprecedented moment in all of our lives? Yeah, so uh, I live with my girlfriend, which uh, I think has been amazing. Um, just having someone there um, um, so that, you know, I'm not by myself constantly. I think that would be a little bit uh, more challenging. But um, we've been going on lots more walks. We've been going more hiking whenever possible. And obviously adhering to the safety guidelines. Um, we've been trying... Uh, online uh, kind of board games and setting up Zoom meetings with friends and doing digital board games, which have been uh, interesting to figure out. Um, we've done lots of virtual hangouts with, with friends 
um, catching up, um, just calling family, um, and uh, let's see what else. Cooking a lot, learning you know, new recipes, uh, baking, and just trying new things. If you know we can find the ingredients, <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I guess uh, what else? Just reading. I don't know, kind of more uh, self improvement time. Um, you know, trying to kind of stay away from from the news media at times, uh, just kind of distracting ourselves with um, with other things. So. Well, in some ways, you've already answered the second question, and that is, in a time of physical separation and social distancing, how are you staying connected to family and friends? Yeah, so um, my, my parents still live in, in Longmont, so we've done, you know, obviously phone calls and Zoom calls, and, um, you know, these virtual um, hangout sessions. Um, really just yeah talking with people uh we've tried uh i know the long the longmont y was doing virtual um or zoom workout sessions um so we gave those a shot um that was been, that was interesting to try and be a part of um so it's it's been uh fun seeing kind of how businesses are trying to be innovative and, and trying new ways to, to do that so well assuming that whatever the new normal is on the other side of this is going to be different than what normal was on, on the other side before yep. we got into this, yep. uh, that life will be different. Even, even as we settle into a new routine, what do you, what do you want to see? Uh, what's your aspiration? What's your preferred future on the other side of this crisis? Oh, that's a, that's a great question. Um, I think for one, I definitely noticed that I took for granted, um, the physical connection that you have with people, um, even giving them a handshake or a hug, um, you know, we're kind of taking that for granted, or at least I have. Um, so it'd be nice to kind of start doing that again. Um, and um, just realizing, I guess, how, how fragile, you know, we are and how, um, you know, being healthy and, and you know, keeping things clean is uh, is important. Um, also, um, you know, kind of how potentially fragile our economy is from uh, if you know things shut down for an extended period of time. How does that impact you know our local economy, um, and how can we kind of push through that? So, um, I I would like to see um, better. Um, potentially ways of addressing future pandemics. I think now that we've kind of gone through our first one, I think there'll be a lot of lessons learned on what to do and what not to do. Um, and I think, you know, this will be a, a good opportunity for for people to, to figure out kind of what that is and, and uh, make it easier for the next one, if that happens. So. Well, let's pray that it doesn't. Yeah. But, I, but, but a lot of people are thinking about it. Yeah. Sergio, thanks for participating in this project. Take care of yourself and your girlfriend and to the, de to, to the degree that you can do it at distance your family. Yeah, thank you. You as well, Tim.